the British unleashed their new wonder weapon on an unsuspecting enemy. One can almost imagine what it must have been like in 1916 when the Germans, peering out of their waterlogged trenches, saw these great armoured monsters trundling towards them. No sign of human beings. This terrifying, growling, noisy beast that can smash its way through buildings, uproot trees, crush cars with impunity. The days of trench warfare were numbered. The Germans were digging trenches at least nine feet wide. So the designers solved the problem by literally increasing the size of the frame of the vehicle and then wrapping the tracks all the way around. And what it means is that on rough ground, this vehicle will present a tracked surface, a moving track, to at virtually any angle, from nose down to nose in the air. There's always something to grip and keep it going. Tracks have to withstand huge stresses. They have to be able to climb steep gradients, keep moving through water, and plow through desert sand. Track design has been much refined since World War I, but the big change came in the 1970s, and it's invisible. In 1916, tracks were made of cast iron. Today, they're a complex mix of steels. We have to control the type of steel that we use in each individual part so that it's strong enough to do the job. And the way we can do that is by controlling the chemistry of the steel. Some parts of the track have to be flexible. Others demand pure hardness. Track technology has come a long way. This strength test shows just how far. Two track links have been made that look virtually identical. One of modern steel, the other cast iron. Both will be tested to breaking point. We would expect the modern track link material to sustain a load of around about 18 or 20 double-decker buses being loaded onto it in this central section. First into the test rig is the cast iron track link. It buckles under a force of 21 tonnes. Next up is the modern steel track link. It fails at an impressive 40 tonnes, withstanding twice the force of the cast iron. The historical material has failed catastrophically and it's actually broken all the way through the link. Whereas the modern steel material, not only has it carried twice the load, but also it's, it's been able to bend whilst it's carried that load before it's broken. 